guys, welcome back to Heart of the Batter. Today I'm gonna to be showing you some of my favorite cookbooks, some of my most used and worn cookbooks, and cookbooks that I really draw inspiration from in my own kitchen. Which one should I start with, guys? Okay, so I'm gonna be starting with this lovely little cookbook right here. It may be small, but it is fierce. This cookbook, my Nana actually put together and she gave it to me for my 21st birthday, but before she gave it to me, she had made it for my great grandma. So it went from her and then to me after she passed. And it literally says in here, I made this cookbook pass from one generation to the next with love, Nana Pam. Like I told you guys, she used to cook and bake a lot during the holidays and she still does. Um, so she would bake, let me see if I can find it in here, one second, almond roca. This recipe right here. Every single Christmas, she makes like five tubs of it. And I don't know how she does it. She's got her own pair of little elves because I show up and I say hi, I leave for an hour and I come back and there's tubs everywhere full of delicious toffee. It's one of my favorite things to eat. I have to be really careful though because I will just keep my hand going in it. So throughout this cookbook, there are definitely the baked goods. We've got fudge, we've got caramels, candy corn, toffee, wedding cake cookies, all that good stuff. But there's also some savory dishes that I'm hoping I get to make for you guys. On my mom's side, I'm Norwegian and German and we do have a couple of dishes in here from that side of the family. And we have a Norwegian lefse, which is a potato flattened pancake type dish. Kind of like a crepe, but it's like a potato crepe. My Nana makes them, my grandpa loves them. And the way he likes to eat them is he takes them and he puts butter on it and he just dips it in sugar and eats it. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but it's actually pretty good. But you can eat them with anything. So you can make lefse sweet or you can make it savory. So maybe I'll make that too. But this cookbook means the world to me and I draw a lot of inspiration from it. I draw a lot of inspiration from my family on both sides when I'm cooking. And um, so I'm hoping that I will have a lot of these to show you guys and hopefully I'll get to do my family proud when I make them. Okay, you know how you see people and you don't really know them because you haven't spent time with them, but you kind of think you do and they're like your best friend in your head and you wish that you could. Chrissy Teigen, she is so hilarious, so funny. She's also a mom, so I relate to her on that level. Look at how pretty she looks. Look at that. Look at her just eating chicken. I think she's amazing. She's integrated her family and her love of food so well in this cookbook and you can tell as soon as you read it. She's got a lot of different things in here from chicken wings, cheesy guacamole. My favorite, oh, yum, is a Dutch baby pancake. Will you look at that beautiful thing? It's not flat, it's not round, it's just this thing. When you want to impress somebody, do this one. Super simple, done in under 20 minutes and when you take it out, it's big and fluffy and they'll just, freak out when they make it. What I like to do with this recipe though, instead of just using regular syrup, I like to kind of elevate the syrup. Um, and so I did a blood orange syrup with mine and it was delicious. Powdered sugar, blood orange syrup, butter. <gasps> Thank you, Chrissy. So when I got to Broadway and I started getting that urge to bake, I needed to buy some cookbooks so that I could know what I was doing. And this cookbook here, you can tell, look at the pages are coming out of it. Martha Stewart's Cupcakes. You see all these pages? <laughs> Falling out, dog-eared to I don't know what I've made, I don't know how many out of this cookbook. So I was on Broadway during the fall, so I really wanted to be reminded of home. I wasn't able to make it home for Thanksgiving that year, so I did a lot of like pumpkin spice, sweet potato type baked goods during that time. And this was one of my favorite ones. Pumpkin brown butter cupcakes. I hope you guys are paying attention. If any of these recipes sound good, let me know in the comments and maybe we'll be able to make them. Yes. But this one was delicious. And see, I learned a little tip here. Instead of trying to ice it on my own, you just flip them upside down and put it in the icing yourself. Who knew? But I would like to thank Martha for this cookbook because I don't know what I'd do without it. So I will be keeping this one for a long time as well. 
This next cookbook is also another one of my favorites and it is a more recent one. It's called Handmade Baking by Cameron Siddiqui. And this cookbook is really great because it has a lot of recipes for simple things. There are sugar cookies in here, there's um, chocolate cake recipes. Happy birthday, dear cake. Happy birthday to you. There is um, bread recipes, rolls, there's all sorts of different things in here. And for me, I really loved what he did. He describes it very easily. He makes sure that with each step-by-step -step that you're taking, he makes sure to explain everything just in case you don't know something. And it's, it's awesome to be able to have that in there so you're not having to go from this to Google to try and figure out what something is. Now, my mom, my mom's recipe for this and my Nana's recipe for this is bomb, but his banana bread recipe really does come close. It's so good. I think I've made it, I don't know how many times. Oh, there might be a piece of banana right there. But it is delicious. It's sweet, it's um, moist, it's not super heavy. Uh, I know when I've made this and my brothers come over, it's pretty much gone by the time he goes back home. And then the other thing that I made that I really liked, I made cream scones. They are delicious. I made these scones, I took a picture of them and posted it on Instagram, and Cameron Sneaky himself actually commented on my picture. I thought that was really cool, so thank you, Cameron. Um, I hope I did your scones justice. I know you didn't get to taste them, but I think they tasted pretty good. This one is for all of my dog lovers out there. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Home cooking for your dog. <laughs> That's how much I love my puppies. This particular book, it actually says a lot of stuff about what dog's diet should be, how you can take care of your dog, um, if dogs have allergies, what you can do, what you can substitute, just anything that you need to know um, for actually making home cooked food for your dog. In here, there is a recipe for Pupcakes. Mm -hmm. Not cupcakes, but pupcakes. And I actually made them for my dog Minnie for her birthday. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was so cute. I, I'm pretty sure I documented it on Instagram. My other dog Miles was still here with us at the time. And you know, they got to lick the spoon and it was this whole thing and it was so cute, but she devoured it. Minnie is a Schnauzer Poodle Bichon mix. So she is a Sean Zoodler. A bee schnoodle. Sh yeah, she's everything. She's in every single memory that I have over the past seven years. And so I know that with her around, it makes things, um, it makes things a little bit easier. And she loves DJ. She takes such good care of him. And she's always watching. She's always making sure he's okay. And I love that. I think that every little kid should grow up with a dog. So I can't wait to see their relationship blossom. Let's talk about being a mom. <laughs> How to boost your breast milk. So this one is a recent one that I've gotten, but let me tell you, it has really helped me out. Um, trying to maintain a milk supply when you're a mom is something that's really important if you're breastfeeding, but the recipes are also good even if you're not. So I made this recipe the other day. Let me see if I can find it. Dog eared the pages, love it. Sweet potato muffins. Did you see that? Do you see that right there? That's like from the sweet potato. <laughs> I had it all over my hands and I had to open the book to look. To help keep your milk supply up, there's a lot of oatmeal in this, there's a lot of sweet potatoes, which are super food, which are also good for you to keep you healthy and to keep the little one healthy. He's asleep upstairs. This might be one of the quick ones that we do. This is no bake peanut butter oat bars. All of the ingredients that you would usually use to make cookies, except you don't have to put them in the oven and they're super quick. So I'm really excited to be able to experiment with some of these as well. All right, so these were my favorite cookbooks. I hope you enjoyed me talking through them. <laughs> if there are any recipes in any of this that you find that you like or that sparked your interest, no pun intended, again, let me know in the comments because it would be so much fun to make some for you guys. All right, I'll see you next week.